Hello everyone and welcome back to Serious Sunday. I'm your host Luke, and this is the show where I talk about video games and things. This week in video game news, we've learned that, sadly, Square Enix has begun the process of selling off its IO Interactive subsidiary, best known for their titles Hitman and Kane and Lynch, as well as the short-lived but entertaining Freedom Fighters. Since its acquisition by Square Enix as a part of the purchase of IDOS Interactive, their parent company in 2009, IO were responsible for the creation of Kane and Lynch 2, Dog Days, Hitman Absolution, and the subtitle is Hitman Episodic series released last year. It was announced on May 11th in a statement to investors that Square Enix, parent company to IO, has booked an extraordinary loss to the tune of 4.9 billion yen, or about $43.2 million, in their financial closing for the 2016 fiscal year, as a result of the decision to focus its resources and energies on key franchises and studios which, in this case, do not include IO Interactive. To put that in layman's terms, it was decided that IO's contributions to the company weren't sufficient to justify the continued funding of their work, and they're taking a $43 million loss and cutting IO loose. This comes only a few months after the January resignation of IO's previous studio head, Hannes Seifert, to join Riot Games, makers of League of Legends, and not long after the release of the sixth and final episode of the 2016 episodic Hitman game. It may come as a surprise to many perhaps that the studio behind the by all accounts fairly popular Hitman series is considered a low earner by Square Enix. I know that I was taken aback when I heard the news, but disproportionate to its visibility, the most recent entry in the series according to data I gathered over VG Charts and Steam Spy only just broke about 1.15 million copies over all major platforms. Even making the unlikely assumption that every copy sold was the $60 full season. That's $50 million in profit after platform cut on a four-year project for a subsidiary with 200 employees, not to mention money spent on marketing and on Square's side. It's entirely possible that they didn't even break even on the project, despite its familiarity in the game space. This is juxtaposable with the release of Rise of the Tomb Raider, the other major franchise to come out of the IDOS acquisition which sold 1.4 million units on Steam alone, according to Steam Spy and somewhere in the range of 5 million total if VG Charts is to be believed. It's a sad reality, unfortunately, that even companies that make games that the general gaming public are aware of and by and large enjoy can still live or die by the success of a single project, and sadly, this was IO's. Square Enix's withdrawal means that IO is now without a parent company and, to that end, without funding for further projects. Fortunately, however, there may yet be a light at the end of the tunnel, instead of a blanket dissolution of the company, which is not entirely uncommon in the industry, Square Enix has begun the process of attempting to sell the business to other potential investors. There's absolutely no guarantee at this point whether another company will buy IO, but I can imagine there will be at least some interest. In a perverse sense, it's better that a whole studio is cut loose instead of the studio be subject to layoffs, as, in general, the prospect of a company being able to buy an entire functioning studio that can immediately be put to work is an attractive proposal, especially one who's apparently retained the rights to their most popular franchise, the Hitman series. Which is the other vaguely positive part of this news. There's currently a rumor circulating that IO retains the ownership of the Hitman license, and if this is true, it's likely a part of IO's original terms of acquisition, allowing them to retain their golden goose even after Square Enix decided to set them loose. A quick look at the Hitman Steam store page shows Square Enix as the publisher still, so it's likely that for the foreseeable future, sales of 2016's Hitman will be shared between Square and IO, though its status as of the sale of IO to another parent company could go any of many ways. As it stands, those of us outside looking in only have the information that's publicly available, and we honestly don't know what IO's war chest looks like currently. It appears, come hell or high water, they intend to release the second season of Hitman, and it's an honest possibility that it could float the company as an independent entity for a while, but it's a scary situation nonetheless, to be sure. As someone who's very familiar with studio sales, dissolution, and layoffs, I imagine that those 200 folks still working in IO are currently on pins and needles, and my heart goes out to them. 
Not knowing about your fate is one of the worst parts of a situation like this. I sincerely hope, as a fan of their work and as a colleague in the industry, that everything transitions smoothly and can continue to be business as usual for them as soon as possible. Good luck everyone, we're rooting for you. But that's it for me for tonight. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Serious Sunday, and if you haven't already, maybe show some support for IO and take a look at the new Hitman game. I'll be keeping an eye on this situation and update if I hear anything new in a future episode of Serious Sunday. I hope that I'll see you around for the next one, and if you liked what you saw today and want to see more of it, consider joining our little community of people that enjoy both playing and making video games. Regardless, enjoy the rest of your Sunday or whatever day it is that you happen to be watching this video, and take care.